much happening there. Let's let's slow this down. Break it down. That last little change, beautiful. So I came across this trailer for a video game that's coming out soon called Sonic Dream Team. The soundtrack in this thing sounded amazing. So I looked up online to see who wrote this thing. And sure enough, it's none other than T. Lopes, which is a name I'm familiar with because he did the soundtrack for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge video game, which is actually another game that I didn't play a whole lot of, but I listened to that soundtrack a ton. In fact, it was one of my most listened to albums of last year. If you haven't heard that soundtrack yet, I definitely recommend you check it out, especially if you like what you're about to hear right now. Let's jump in. Boom. That didn't work. Okay, now it's playing. So, setting the key right away. Sounds like C sharp. Okay, super cool. So right off the bat, we're introduced with a really cool musical concept, something called modal interchange. Okay, there's chords here that are outside of the realm of what you typically find in just major harmony. The chord progression here is C sharp, G sharp, A sharp minor, A, B. So we're in the key of C sharp, which means it's really the A and the B that are kind of like what are they doing here, right? In the key of C sharp, we typically see G sharp. That would be our five chord. It's not uncommon at all to see A sharp minor because that would just be our six chord. But what's weird is to see an A natural, right? A natural, what is it doing there? Well, let's think about some of the other C sharp scales that are out there. For instance, like a C sharp minor or a C sharp mixolydian or a C sharp dorian. Right? These are all different C-sharp scales that feature C-sharp as their tonic, right? So what we can do is kind of look at the chords that are diatonic to those scales and sort of just steal them, pull them over to whatever key we want, okay? So what that means is let's take C-sharp minor, for example, okay? It wouldn't be at all weird to see a chord progression like A, B, C-sharp minor, Right? Right? Sounds pretty familiar, right? So those chords that A and B, you can sort of think of them as like a flat six, a flat seven, and then one minor, right? Well, let's just replace that one minor with one major, right? Like, let's pull it back to C sharp major. Okay, it's got that super familiar sort of video gamey triumphant sound, okay? That flat six, flat seven, one major. It's all over video game music, all over theatrical music, anything that's made to sound big and triumphant. It's got this in there. It's got it in there. Let's keep going here. All right, so it's getting a little heavy on us, right? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think they're down tuned. Let's hear that again. Okay, there's so much happening there. Let's let's slow this down, break it down. That last little change, beautiful. Okay, so we got our one chord, our flat seven chord, to the next chord here. The bass note is gonna be an A sharp. So you might be tempted to say, oh, it's our six chord, right? But it's not. It's actually our four chord with the third in the lowest voicing here. 
a four minor over the third. By going from that major third to the minor third, we're creating a nice chromatic walking bass line. How does F sharp minor exist in the key of C sharp major? Well, if we look at one of these parallel scales, C sharp minor, for instance, it's very common to see a four minor chord. It's one of the diatonic chords of C sharp minor. F sharp minor lives in C sharp minor. So yoink, we pulled it on over in the major tonality world here, okay? And I love the sound of a four minor in a major context. You hear it all the time. It's a really, really common kind of sound. After that F sharp minor over A, we have the one chord again over the fifth. That puts that nice chromatic walking bass line in the bottom voice. Then four, then we're doing a chromatic walk with the bass line to G or F double sharp, whatever you want to call this. And the question is again, why is it here? Well, it's part of this chord. It's the third of a D sharp. In C sharp, we'd expect to see a D sharp minor, but we're seeing a D sharp major or even a D sharp seven, we could call it. So why are we seeing this? Well, this is a secondary dominant chord. We should probably do a whole other video about secondary dominant chords, but this secondary dominant chord is pulling, this is the five of five. This is pulling to the fifth of C sharp, okay? And then finally, instead of going like you would expect from five to one, it goes from five to flat seven to one. That flat seven in this point is almost acting like a suspension, just sort of like making you wait a little bit more to get back to that one chord. And then they kind of kill it one more time at the end here. Listen to this. So there it is. So cool, and they're keeping the, the one in the bass there. Such a cool sound. All right, let's keep going. Okay, cool. So we've gone completely to the dark side here. We are now in the key of C sharp minor, right? We've basically been stealing all these chords from C sharp minor, C sharp minor, and now we're finally including the one chord in the equation. The one chord has been like the one constant. It's been C sharp major, C sharp major, C sharp. Meanwhile, all the chords around it are almost becoming more and more minor. Right? But now all of a sudden, the one chord has even made the switch. So that's why it sounds so natural going to C sharp minor here, because we've been kind of teasing C sharp minor this whole time, right? Now we just fully have given into it. So here's C sharp minor, sounds beautiful. And we have another kind of line cliche, this sort of walking bass line going down from our tonic. It almost sounds like Stairway to Heaven here, right? We have something sort of like this. Listen again here, check it out. Did you hear that? I heard it. Let's see. One more time here. Okay, okay. Okay, this is a this is like a D which in the key of C sharp is a flat 2, right? This is like a tritone substitution. In the key of C sharp, we'd expect to see G sharp 7 pulling back to C sharp. We see that all the time. Okay, tritone substitutions are basically the idea that you can substitute out any dominant seventh chord with 
another dominant seventh chord whose root note is a tritone away. So for instance, if I was playing a G sharp and I went to D, that's a tritone away, and I built a dominant seventh chord off of that. Okay, uh, that I think is what we're hearing here. It, it might be like boiled down to a major chord or even a power chord or something like that, but the function is basically of uh, tritone substitution, which actually then gets substituted out itself for the actual five chord, which then finally goes back to one. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, super cool. I think I've already gone way longer than I intended to. I've got a lead sheet for this if you're interested in seeing in a little bit more detail the exact chord progression. Um, I think it's worth mentioning just the guitar tones, the production on this. I think that's what makes it so cool sounding to me is that it's got this sort of metal, almost like leaning metal sound, but the chords are so like theatrical and and you know, uh, like video gamey, that it's just that combination of the two that I'm a real sucker for. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. If you liked it, like it. If you wanna see more stuff like this, subscribe it. At any rate, I appreciate all you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care now.